Sugar Flows. Episode 8 starts with Wednesday meeting with Tyler in the woods and confronting him about being the hide. He is quick to deny the allegations. He asks Wednesday why she would confront him alone in the woods if she really thought he was the hide. Wednesday replies that she didn't come alone, she's brought a few sirens along and Bianca uses her powers to sedate him. They take him to Xavier's art studio and tie him down on the chair with chains. Wednesday starts interrogating him. As it turns out, Tyler's mom was a and she thinks Tyler got the genes from her. Tyler pleads that being a son of an outcast doesn't necessarily make him a monster. Wednesday is not moved by his fake tears and switches it up to some light torture. The sirens didn't sign up to see someone being tortured so they leave her on her own and report her to the principal. The principal calls the sheriff who was listening to Dr. Kinbot's assessment of Tyler in their therapy session. Before her death, the therapist was deeply concerned about the psychological trauma his mother's death had on Tyler. After receiving the call, he rushes to rescue Tyler from the determined hands of Wednesday. The sheriff does not press charges but warns Wednesday not to push the matter any further. As Wednesday is about to leave the police station, Tyler asks to speak to her privately. He confesses to the crime and mocks her for being wrong. He tells her that every time he killed he felt thrilled by his victim's fear. He warns her that she has no idea what is coming. The principal decides enough is enough and expels Wednesday and tells her to get ready to leave the school the next afternoon. Wednesday tries to convince her to give her more time to prove that Tyler is a hide. The principal refuses and says she is disappointed in how things ended. Desperate, Wednesday visits Xavier in jail. He is not exactly enthralled to hear that while he was suffering, tied up with chains in a cell, Wednesday was sharing a kiss with Tyler. Wednesday tells him that she knows that Tyler is the hide and asks for his help. He refuses to help her and tells her the only solution is for her to leave the town. He tells her that all she has ever done is make things hard for everyone she comes across with. The next morning, Wednesday packs her stuff and gets ready to leave. She and Enid share a bittersweet goodbye. She even shares a goodbye with Bianca and the Nightshades and warns them to be prepared for what Tyler is planning next. Ms. Thornhill also gives her white oleander as a parting gift and wishes her the best. Before leaving town, she visits Eugene who is awake from his coma and says her goodbyes. Eugene tells her about the night of his attack and says he saw the boots of the person who set the monster's lair ablaze. The boots were red and he doesn't think Dr. Kinbot was the culprit. Wednesday realizes that the only person she has seen with red boots is Ms. Thornhill. She goes back to the school and confronts her. Wednesday tells her that Tyler confessed everything to her. She brings in Principal Larissa who has shapeshifted into Tyler. Faced with the bare facts stated by Wednesday. Ms. Thornbill confesses and asks Tyler to kill Wednesday. After hearing the confession, Larissa transforms back and asks Ms. Thornbill aka Laurel to cooperate. She reiterates by killing Principal Larissa by injecting her with nightshade poisoning and hitting Wednesday with a spade. She takes Wednesday to Crackstone's crypt and chains her. Thing rushes to Ed in to get help and explains the situation to her while Eugene listens in on the video call worried about what is happening. In the crypt, Ms. Thornbill reveals her plan to eradicate the school. She is planning to bring back Crackstone using the body parts Tyler collected from his victims. Goody didn't only kill Crackstone, she cursed his soul too. Ms. Thornbill hopes to use Wednesday to unseal the bill, bloodlock on the sarcophagus that Goody locked Crackstone in. Wednesday is the key to opening it up as she is the living descendant of Goody. The ritual needs to be done on a night of a blood moon so it is all systems go for Ms. Thornbill. In the meantime, the sheriff gets a call from one of his officers alerting him that Eugene's parents believe something wrong is happening at Nevermore. She and other officers can't get to the school in time as all their car tires have been slashed. The sheriff was on his way transporting Xavier to prison and decides to go to the school. Miss Thornhill starts her ritual and awakens Crackstone who promises his vengeance will be swift and true. Wednesday tries to confront him but he stabs her and they leave her for dead. Goody appears before her and tells her how to defeat Crackstone. She tells her to use the talisman necklace her mom gave to her. The talisman will allow Goody to pass through Wednesday and heal her but she will never be able to see her again. Wednesday agrees and is healed by Goody. Enid mobilizes the nightshades and the sirens offer to use their powers to evacuate the school. As she rushes to save Wednesday, Enid starts wolfing out. After being healed, Wednesday rushes to stop Crackstone but meets Tyler. He transforms and starts attacking her but Enid appears in her wolf form and starts fighting the monster. On the other hand, the sheriff changes his mind and decides to track the location of Tyler. He leaves Xavier, locked in his car and heads into the woods but he is freed by Thing. He witnesses the fight between the monster and the wolf. 
he shoots Tyler in his monster form and he transforms back into human form after being hurt in the fight. Meanwhile in school, Wednesday engages in a vicious fight with Crackstone. Bianca and Xavier try to help her but Crackstone is too strong. Wednesday remembers what Goody told her about defeating Crackstone and stabs him in the heart. He dissipates into thin air but the fight is not over as Ms. Thornhill charges in with a gun. Eugene releases his bees to attack her and through his help, they are able to save the school. How does Wednesday end? Wednesday completes her novel and she and Dina visit the principal's office to pay their respects. They acknowledge that they will miss her and that they respect that she died for the school. Classes for the rest of the semester are cancelled and Dina invites Wednesday to visit her in San Francisco. Wednesday thanks Bianca for her help and it seems like they might start getting along. Wednesday also talks with Xavier and they patch things up. He gives her a phone and asks her to text him sometime. He asks if she will be coming back next semester, but she doesn't reply. On her way home, she receives a message on her phone from an unknown person who is stalking her. She also passes the car that is transporting Tyler and narrates how some loose ends are still untied. The season ends with Tyler transforming into a monster while in transit. Thank you for watching. Subscribe well, for more videos like tomorrow's this. Nemesis.